Okay guys, today I'm gonna to teach you about something called pressure belts. Okay, so the globe, because of a variety of different factors, the globe is separated into different systems of high and low pressure that range depending on latitude. But the pressure is not necessarily high where it's cold or low where it's hot um, because it, uh, it changes as you go up from the equator towards the North Pole and it changes as you go down from the equator to the South Pole. Okay, there's different belts of high and low pressure. These are what we call pressure belts. Okay, and they're caused by really three things. Surface conversions, surface divergence, and uh, something called convection, which we already know what that is. Okay, now convection currents, rising air, this happens at the equator because the equator is consistently hot and gets a lot of direct sunlight. Okay, so rising air spreads out as it gets to high levels of the troposphere in an area called the tropopause. Okay, spreads out and as that air becomes cool, it sinks again. And then it starts that process over again in a cyclical motion. So right at the equator, that air rises because of convection, spreads out in the tropopause, cools, sinks, and then it goes right back to the equator in this kind of motion, boom, over, sinks. Okay, now these regions where that air sinks, okay, create belts of high pressure, okay, in what we would call the, right at the tropics, okay. Um, this is what we would call subtropical belts of high pressure. Now this happens because when that equator equatorial low pressure air rises because of convection currents and spreads out and sinks. It creates an area where it sinks, where that area maintains high pressure. So low pressure rises, spreads, sinks, and then creates a belt of high pressure. So you have subtropical high pressure belts right above and right below the equator. Now. Next, in order to understand why the belt north of the subtropical high pressure belt and the belt south of the subtropical high pressure belt is low, this is because of convergence, okay? So when air from the North Pole and air from the South Pole, because of their high pressure, they're cold, they have high pressure, when they travel and meet, because they're gonna be inclined to travel the low, lower pressure regions when they travel and they come into contact with dispersed diverging air coming from the subtropical high pressure belt these two air masses which are high pressure are going to come into contact with one another okay in what we call subpolar low pressure belts so that converging air that converging high pressure air from the north pole and from the subtropical high pressure belt is going to cause that air to rise and when that air rises it's going to have a a similar phenomenon to what happens from convection currents on the equator that air is going to rise spread out in the tropopause hit the north pole become higher pressure and then sink again and, and start that whole cycle over again so as you can see very predictable oscillating patterns of air rising and sinking at different latitudes on the planet. So always remember low pressure is going to emerge from surface convergence. Okay, so surface convergence you can see in the subpolar low pressure belts. Okay, high pressure is converging in one spot and creating convergence and turning that into a low pressure zone. So surface conversion equals low pressure and then surface divergence, whenever you see diverging winds on the surface of the earth, that's how you know you're gonna be talking about a high pressure belt, okay? Now, what's important to understand now is you need to take everything I just said and then combine it with your understanding of the Coriolis effect, okay? So remember, the Coriolis effect bends winds in different directions in the northern and southern hemisphere because of the rotation of the planet okay so this is why we have these very predictable wind patterns on the planet okay so in the equatorial regions these are areas of low pressure 
okay? So you have converging winds just below the equatorial line and just above the equatorial line, and that's gonna cause an actual, actually a region of very low wind, okay? Very low pressure, and that's gonna, they call these the doldrums. There's no wind there, okay? Now, in you have to remember the direction of the wind itself is gonna be determined by the Coriolis effect. So remember in the North Pole, they always bend to the right. Okay, so if you're coming up from the south, right, if you're coming down from the uh, North Pole, it's gonna go right, it's always gonna go right, but whether it's going east or west depends on if it's coming from the equator to the North Pole or from the North Pole to the equator and vice versa in the Southern Hemisphere, same concept. Okay, so we'll start with what we call the polar easterlies, okay? See the polar easterlies coming from the North Pole, gonna bend to the right. All these winds are gonna bend to the right. Okay, now you're probably looking at this and saying that looks like it's going left, but if you're coming from the North Pole going down, the polar easterlies are gonna go from high pressure, they're gonna be inclined to go to low pressure just like all wind does, and it's gonna get bent to the right because of the Coriolis effect, okay? Now, if you're talking about the subtropical high pressure belt, okay, that's gonna be inclined to go to the low pressure system, just like these two systems were communicating. So this is gonna go this way, okay? These are what you call the westerlies. Okay. And they call these the westerlies because they travel from the west. There's a westerlies down here too, just like a pol um, polar systems in the South Pole. Okay, now, same concept, okay? Now remember, winds that are traveling from the high pressure, subtropical high pressure belt, down to the equatorial low pressure belt, are also gonna turn right because we're still in the northern hemisphere. But which way are they gonna go? They're gonna go right but also coming from the north. So you're thinking to yourself, this looks like it's left, but it's not, because it's coming from a northern latitude. These are called the northeast trade winds, okay? They're called the northeast trade winds because they're coming from the north, just like these are called the westerlies because they're coming from the west. So it's going from a high pressure system, naturally inclined to go down to a lower pressure system. It's gonna bend to the right, okay? Same concept in the Southern Hemisphere, but the roles are completely reversed, okay? Remember, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, the winds are always gonna bend to the left, okay? So if you're coming from the South Pole and you're going north, the polar easterlies are gonna bend left, okay? Everything's gonna bend left, okay? Polar easterlies, same concept with because this is a high pressure system going to a low pressure belt because of that convergence, okay? And then from the subpolar low pressure belt, okay? That's gonna receive air from the high pressure belt, just like up here. Okay, so these are gonna travel to the left. These are also called westerlies. Why? Because they're coming from the west. Southern Hemisphere Westerlies. Westerlies. And then one more. The subtropical high pressure belt is gonna be inclined to bring wind to the equator because of the equatorial low pressure line. These are gonna bend to the left, just like all winds in the south do. Okay, and these are called south East trade winds. Now this area really close to the equator, just a couple of degrees north and south, these are called the doldrums and they actually experience very, very, very little winds, okay? So remember, you gotta take a lot of different information and combine it when understanding this lesson. Rising air in the equator comes from convection, gets a lot of direct sunlight, that's gonna spread out in the tropopause, it's gonna get cool and heavy and sink, can create a convection current. That sinking air is gonna create a high pressure belt in both of these regions, both of those are gonna di diverge. Some of it's gonna send 
the north is going to send it north, the south is going to send it south, and then they're going to create their own current as well. Okay, when these two winds, the polar high pressure hits the high pressure subtropical, it's going to come into contact with the subpolar low pressure belt, create a low pressure system, and that air is going to rise too. Okay, so this is why we have um, varying degrees of pressure systems on the planet going from high, low, high, low, high, low, and then high again. And the direction of the winds, of course, comes from the Coriolis effect. Bends to the right in the north, bends to the left in the south, and depending on if you're coming from the poles to the equator, to the equator to the pole, is going to determine if that wind is going east or west. Okay? And these are all the names. You have your um, westerlies, westerlies, trade winds coming into contact with the equator, and then you have your polar winds. Okay? Thanks, guys. Pressure belts.